so welcome back to the channel today we're going to do a follow-up on my ram 3500 we are visiting family so i have not had a lot of time to really take to do videos on my truck now quick spoiler alert if you follow me you probably are very confused you see a four truck in my feed then you see my truck all of my videos are out of order like i have videos i've done from a year ago that i'm posting now so i apologize in advance however i did recently level my truck this is all pretty relevant in the ford truck as i as i said in the first video my friend let me borrow it he did offer it to me to buy and that's kind of why i was testing it out because i was really strongly thinking about buying it from him i got those videos like a month ago and so today we've had my leveling kit on for a month and so this is like about 1500 miles or so i'm going to show you guys some footage really quickly on the timberins because as you saw in the title big mistake made let's get into it man she is sitting tall so we're going to take off one of the well, actually the spacers on the Oh yeah, it's, it's literally, you can't even move it. So we're gonna take the spacer out because it's not supposed to be touching here. So we'll just take that spacer off on each side. And then that way, when I'm unloaded, going on the road, it won't be touching the uh, axle. So you don't really want these like this all the time. It does make a bouncy ride. I was thinking I was gonna be okay with it, but when we drove it, it was pretty bad. So online it says, if you're touching the axle, you should just, take off the spacer so as i mentioned that was about a month ago when i got that footage but here it is so as you guys can see the timberin actually is sitting on the axle right there because i have some wheel articulation so on this side oh you can't really see it darn right there you can see it right there you see how far away it is so that's how it sits it doesn't sit like this anymore so i apologize i'm actually on a really bad road you know what how about this i'm gonna move my truck real quick so you guys can see what i'm talking about hold on one second hopefully you can see a little bit better right there than on that side right there so it's not on the axle anymore my goal for the timbrens was for them to make contact before i added my trailer because i didn't want too much squat and because of the level as you can see up here That's going to obviously take away all my rake up front. So then my truck is going to obviously have more squat in the back. But the ride was absolutely terrible. Let me rephrase that. It wasn't bad for me, but my wife would have hated it. But the truck was really bouncy. And when we were going down the road, you could actually feel it like bouncing. So you don't want the Timberins to make contact before the trailer. So I took it off and after that truck was fine so let's go ahead and take it for a quick drive like i said i wanted to show you guys kind of my impressions with me in the truck i may do a video with my wife at a later date just so you guys can get her perspective because she did drive a ford f-350 that had 35 by 12 and a half it didn't have a level or anything like that but she said that the truck rode a little bit smoother and i think it was because of the tires i think the 35 inch tires do give a little bit more cushioning going on the road and i'm going to probably give you my impressions on that today because I will forever have 35 inch tires. It's kind of hard to see on this road, but no one's coming. So this road right now, I'll give you a few cuts here just so I can find some good bumpy roads. But as I mentioned, if you are looking at tires for an HD, do not sleep on 35 inch tires. As I've said in past videos, I have the 295-65, so I actually have more height than an actual 35 by 12 and a half or 35 by 11 and a half inch tire. I'm glad I went this route because man, I didn't want too much whiff this time around just because we're traveling with our fifth wheel and we're, our goal is to go out west. So I didn't want to affect my fuel economy too much. So that was my goal. I do like the way 12 and a half looks, but in my opinion, if you're gonna go 12 and a half tire, you might as well go with an aftermarket wheel. That's just my opinion. Obviously, you can use wheel spacers, but for me, I just prefer to kind of keep this truck more in its stock form. My next truck, I do want to do a little bit more, you know, aftermarket wheels, maybe a two-inch lift. 
things like that but this is my first time actually leveling the truck and I've always been against the blocks so or the pucks whatever you want to call them and so I wanted to try my own and I went with the the uh, least amount of uh, height increase and this is perfect if you're gonna level a truck the cheapest way without upgrading the shocks things like that I promise you this is 100% the way to go so let's talk about the 35s again as I mentioned earlier I will always have 35s on my HDs and the reason why is because they really do create a better riding truck I did a video with my wife on the Ford F-350 and she said I love the way the truck rides and that day was the same day that I got my level and the 35s pretty much done pretty much all done that week I got the 35s on the day before and then I got the level the next day and my wife hadn't driven in my truck and when she drove in the truck she did say the truck does ride better I think I hit a few bumps there hope you guys are paying attention but one thing I'll say about 35s is, so I'm gonna show you real quickly. So, your control is definitely a lot worse. So if I'm on a, on a curvy road, not a back road, but just on a highway and it's curvy, I actually find myself like taking my foot off the acceleration or turning the cruise control off and you know losing about five miles an hour because I feel a little bit more uneasy. Now, I'm just being honest here. I can definitely tell that my truck has something done differently. Now that might be part to the, the level two. The level might also hinder some of your, your handling performance because you're riding a little bit nose higher. But overall, I think with a little bit taller tire, a little bit more sidewall, it does flex more. You can feel that in the road. So just, I recommend 100%. If you do plan on going this route, if you like to speed, uh, I think that you might wanna reconsider these bigger, beefier tires. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a quick acceleration test. Let me get off this hill here. I don't want you guys to think that my truck is fast and it really is. <laughs> here we go. So I'm going to stop right here. And I'm not going to build up boost ring like that. I'm just going to hit the gas. And three, two, one. So the reason why that is so important is because with my 295.60s, even on dry pavement, my truck would lose traction, especially if I did it from a dig like that. Like once that boost came on in like about first, probably like around like second gear, the tires would actually start to spin even with these more aggressive tires. So having these 35s, I don't have that issue anymore. Even in the rain, because I did drive in the rain, I did hit it in the rain one time just to see if it would break loose. And it didn't break loose as much. Now the traction control did come on, but my truck didn't fishtail. With the 295.60s, they would fishtail. It almost was a little too dangerous. I felt like it wasn't enough tire. So adding a little bit more height to the tire did take away all wheel spin. So if you were looking to do burnouts, well, you're probably gonna have to re-gear. Now, I have a weird feeling, I'm gonna do it now. I think that my front passenger side wheel is rubbing still on the sway bar. I can't see that there's any like wear from it. So in time, maybe I'll do like five circles and go fast to see if I can see if it's wearing but I don't see that it's wearing right now but I feel like I hear something grinding and I almost think it is probably the sway bar is touching so I wonder if I do have to add maybe a, a wheel spacer up front and maybe a little bit in the back just to make the wheels a little flush I don't want to do that but these tires aren't wide enough for that so that's the problem for me but I think it might still be touching the sway bar a little bit it's it's like at full lock I don't ever turn that hard so I just did a U-turn at this intersection and I, I just wanted to see if I could hear it and I felt like I did just now, but it, it could just be in my head because I'm looking for it. But overall, even with the little puck, I don't think that I really hurt my performance too much. Um, I think that the truck handles a little bit worse, 100%. The tires 
definitely have increased comfort, but like I said, you just have to slow down. And when I do the towing, I'll be able to give you guys a better gauge at my speed. In the past, I used to go 75, 80 miles an hour. I know you guys get mad at me for going that fast, but when I go 80 miles an hour, it's at 12 o'clock at night, and there's no one on the road, and there's no sun on the road. So my tires are not gonna heat up too much to where they're gonna have a problem. And my tires on my trailer are rated for 81 miles an hour. So if I go 80, I'm not even at full capacity of my tires. I still have three or 4,000 pounds of capacity left on my tires. So when I go that fast, it's at nighttime. I don't go that fast in daytime. So I just wanna make that very clear right now. But in the daytime, I normally go like 70. 70 miles an hour is a good flow of traffic speed. And I feel like I'm not going too slow where I have to keep getting past. So for me, when I do the towing test, I really wanna point out how much slower I can go now because I know I have to slow down with that too. But overall, I love the way the truck looks. I'm gonna show you guys around the truck one last time just because I haven't had a chance to really like take it back yet. Cause as soon as I got everything done, we left that that weekend. So I haven't really had a chance to actually look at my truck and really see how it looks. So today we're gonna do that. But I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I didn't spend a lot of money. Um, I can't remember what I spent for everything, but I wanna say with the Timberlands and the Puck, I wanna say I got everything for like less than like 600 bucks. And as far as the Timberlands go, I've been toying a little bit with them and I have been paying a little bit of attention. I do notice that there's something different about the truck. That's all I'll tell you in this video. And I'll go over it in more detail in the next one, I promise. But with the Timbers on right now, you don't ever notice them on the road unless you hit a really big bump. And I don't think that it's a bad thing when they make contact. I just think that you can tell that there's just something different when it's unloaded too. But when they were on the axles at all times with the spacer, terrible. I mean, my wife would have killed me. She, we would have probably bought my friend's truck. If I wanted to buy a truck that day, that's how I would have done. I would have kept those um, spacers in there and she'd have been like, you gotta, you, let's just get a new truck. And so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how everything turned out. I've been driving now for probably about, probably about 1,500 miles maybe in that ballpark. And overall, like I said, I've, I have no complaints. I feel like everything has worked out great. Um, I'll go over my alignment in another video because I haven't gotten a copy of it yet from my friend. He took a picture and he keeps forgetting to send it to me. I was planning to put that in this video, but we'll do that in the next one. I'll show you guys the alignment. But overall, let's go ahead and stop up here so you guys can see how the truck looks one last time and then I'll pretty much effectively end this video. So I want you guys to have a few takeaway points from this video. Number one, the Timberins are a great option if you do tow or haul stuff in the bed and you want something to combat squat. Um, don't use the spacer if you're not lifted, however. You don't need it. You want there to be a little bit of clearance from them if you are unloaded because it does not increase your ride comfort by having them on the axles like you might think they would. I thought they would increase my ride comfort and actually it made the truck really bouncy and my wife would have hated it. Number two, do not be afraid to go 35s. 35 inch tires, for some people, don't want to deal with rubbing, things like that. You do not have to level the truck to fit these tires because they're only 11 and a half inches wide. I wanted to go with the lift, or the level I should say, because I just wanted it a little bit different look. Because I was actually expecting to buy a truck soon. And now this is my way of kind of making it look a little bit different for me. And these being 295-65, they give you more capacity, they have a great look, and I think that you'll be happy with the ride over the stock tires and the 295 60s because of the more sidewall. Last point I want to make is this. Don't be afraid to go with a cheaper setup like this for your level. And let me explain a little deeper than that. This is only an inch and three quarters of leveling. If I were to go two and a half, three inches, I would have 100% upgraded my coils and my shocks. Because when you go two and a half, three inches, in leveling or, or even in lift all the way around you're altering the geometry of the suspension too much which could potentially be a hazard on the road or just have a really bad ride so inch and three quarters is about what it would be if I added weight on the truck and that's kind of why I felt like it would be okay because that's within the spec of the truck I'm just there all the time now but apart from that you know, the timber range is gonna help a little bit with the squat. I hope you guys like the truck overall. Um, if you are in the market for a Ram, I think this is the perfect setup. 
I really do like the way it looks. I think that it transformed the truck and it does definitely look a little bit meaner too. So that's always a bonus, point, right? There's no car coming. Let me show you guys front end a little bit. There it is. <laughs> looks so good. But thanks guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon.